Jesus said in Matthew 10, 28, listen to this. Be not afraid of those who can kill the body. And after that, they can do no more. But fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Jesus said a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things that he possesses. He also said this, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon what? Earth. But lay up for yourselves treasures in what? Heaven. Are you laying up treasure in heaven? Friends, I want you to know if you kill my body, that's one thing. But I'm still alive. What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? The real you will never die. Friends, you and I will spend eternity somewhere. Should Jesus tarry, every one of us will go by way of the grave. Every one of us in this room are terminal. Everyone watching by internet, you're terminal. When the doctor comes out and says, I'm sorry to tell you, but your dad is terminal. I want you to know, friends, that doctor is terminal who said it. I want you to know every person in this room is terminal because should Jesus tarry, we will all go by way of the grave. The question is, where will you spend eternity? Every soul has a date with death. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die. And after that, what? The judgment. And guess what? You will keep that appointment. I want you to know that death has no respect for age just because you're a young man that don't mean nothing just because you're 86 like my parents that doesn't mean anything friend death is no respecter of persons it's no respecter of age did you know that death is no respecter of possessions it doesn't matter what you have you can't say, I've got too much to go now, friends. When we breathe our last breath and they hang the tag on the toe, we brought nothing into this world and we will bring nothing into the next world. Death is no respecter of persons when it comes to age. When it comes to possessions, death does not respect position. How many know the rich man died even though he was rich? How many know the rich man died even though he was in a high position? Do you think he was too high and mighty to even go out and talk to the leper Lazarus who laid by the gate of his house? Oh yeah, too high and mighty. His position. But you know what? God sent Lazarus to that man's gate every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. But the man wasn't interested in what Lazarus had to say. Because if you look at his condition, if you look at his position, if you look at his possessions, that man doesn't carry any weight. I want to... I want everybody to hear me today who are watching and listening. If the question is not, will you die should Jesus tarry? The question is, are you ready to die? There's a point on the man who wants to die. After that, the judgment. That means after that, the judgment. After that, the judgment. There's no soul sleep here. Your, your soul does not go to the grave. You, will, you know, Jesus didn't say to the thief on the cross, today, you will go to sleep. No, in the grave. No, he said, today you will be with me in paradise. There's no lag time. There's no waiting period for the Christian. There's no purgatory, nothing that never existed. It's a made up scheme by the devil himself to give people a false hope. There is no such thing as soul sleep, friends. When you die, after that, the judgment. What do you mean? I mean you will be automatically right now aware of where you will spend eternity. You will be immediately aware of your future permanent residence. You will be conscious when you get there. You know, the rich man lifted up his eyes and said, how many know he was conscious? He wasn't unconscious. Oh, he was not. He wasn't sleeping. The Bible says in Revelation, blessed are the dead who what? Anybody know the rest of that? Die in the Lord. Happy is the word. Happy are those who die in the Lord. Happy are those who die. Happy? If you're sleeping, friends, you don't know it. But I'll tell you what, if you're awake and conscious, you're happy. So that tells me, friends, there's consciousness. Whether it's a, a good one or a bad one, I will tell you this. You will know where you are. The soul does not go to the grave. I will tell you this. If you end up going to hell, and I pray that no one does in this place, 
But if you do, you will take your memory with you. You will take your memory with you. In fact, you can read that in the book of Luke 16. He said, son, remember. How many of you know the rich man remembered a lot of things? And so will you. You will remember every time you heard the gospel. Did you hear that in hell? You will remember every time you heard the gospel. It will play like a rerun of Gilligan's Island, man. And those can get old. And you won't be yelling, Skipper! You'll be yelling something else. But he won't hear you. Because in hell, even though there's prayer in hell, it's unanswered prayer. Every time you heard the gospel, you will remember it. Every invitation to come to the altar, you will remember that. Every church bell that reminded you it was Sunday when you were on the golf course, you'll remember. Every time we heard songs, just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. And as thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, 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 I didn't come. But you're going to remember it. And that gets to me, even as a born-again Christian, when I think of that, may we never joy in it. May we cry over it. Like Jesus said to the women when he was carrying his cross, don't cry for me, but cry for yourselves. And cry for your children. Do you remember that? We're going to hear those songs. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I cried. But I didn't. But I didn't. I just sang it. I just opened the hymnal and sang it. But I didn't do anything about it. You know, if a man could sin and then not remember anymore, that would be one thing. But I will tell you this. The devil in hell will remind everybody that they didn't receive Christ. Oh yeah. I believe he's going to remind people. I believe he's going to say things like this. Ah! You thought you were smart, didn't you? You thought you were clever, huh? Well, you thought you were a big man when you rejected Christ. You thought you would escape the fires of hell because you read a book on love wins. You smiled at the out-of-date preacher as he gave an out-of-date altar call. You thought you were a big man and you played the fool. You thought all dogs go to heaven because you saw the movie. <laughs> Anyone ever seen that movie? I want to say something today. All dogs do not go to heaven. But you see what man really wants in all that? They think because of evolution and that junk that we're nothing more than elevated animals. And so if we're nothing more than animals, then we can behave any way we want. And it takes morality out of the picture. And that's why they believe in evolution, because you then, if you evolve, then you're not responsible for your actions. But I'm here to tell you that that is not true. I'm here to tell you that we are all created in the image of God. And that He is the creator to whom we owe our allegiance. And when we close our eyes in death, if we have not accepted Christ as our Savior, we will at that moment know the truth. But that truth will not be able to set us free. Because it will be too late. The truth can set you free today. Today. It will be a terrible thing to go to hell, especially if you've been from this country. Because you can turn your radio on and listen to the gospel. Howbeit, I have to say, not much gospel is being on the radio nowadays. But some is. Some is. There are still churches who preach the truth. There are still preachers who are preaching it right. They have taken away a lot of liberties, but we've surrendered them. But there's some things we can still do. We can still go to church on Sunday. We can still pray and seek God, and we can preach the truth. I ask you today, are you ready to die? Oh, if I stay away from church, you see, if I stay away from church and that preacher down the road there on Napoleon Avenue or road, if I stay away from that place, then I won't be accountable. Eh, wrong decision. Because you will then be accountable for your self-imposed ignorance. Number one, he approaches us all the same. What is that? That we are spirit beings and that we will never die and that we will spend eternity somewhere. The question is not will you die physically, but 
friends, where will you spend eternity? I received a phone call, this is many years ago now, and I was in Port Clinton pastoring the church, and a pastor called me up. He said, hey, Jerry, there's a guy that is from Cleveland area, from our area over here, and he said he's visiting Port Clinton for a vacation. And he ended up having a heart attack, and he's in the, he's in the Port Clinton hospital. Can you go see him? He doesn't know God. So I went to see him. And I talked to him about the Lord Jesus. I went from A to Z about Jesus and sin and everything I'm talking to you about today. And at the end of the day, at the end of the conversation, his wife was standing there, tears coming down her face. The man didn't have, they didn't think he was going to make it through the night. His name was Cody. He's an elderly gentleman. I said, Cody, I said, now is the day of salvation. Would you like to give your heart to Christ? And tears came down his face. You know, you can shed tears, but that don't mean nothing. I said, Cody, would you like to give your heart to Christ? He said, Pastor Jerry says, I'm not going to do it. I said, why not? And you know what he said to me? He said, because I don't want to be a hypocrite. And I said, oh my goodness, what do you do with this one? And his wife was standing there and she said, Pastor Jerry, just, just have him pray the sinner's prayer. Have him pray the sinner's prayer. Just have him pray the sinner's prayer. How I many know oh, that won't do it either? You can pray any kind of prayer you want, but a prayer won't save you. However, if you pray that prayer and mean it from your heart, Jesus will save you. But a prayer won't save you, sir. I'm not, giving no, I'm not going to give anybody false hope just by saying words. There's enough priests out there to do that. And I refuse. But I pleaded with him. And he wouldn't get saved. But as the tears rolled down his face, I prayed for him. And he survived. And he went back to Cleveland. And time went on. I don't know what it was, six months or so. I don't know, maybe it was a year. I can't even remember. But I received a phone call from my pastor. He said, hey, Jerry. He said, remember that guy you prayed for in Portland? I said, yeah. He said, remember, remember it's the same guy that Northfleet prayed for and that I talked to about the Lord? He said, yeah. He said, you know how he rejected and rejected and rejected? I said, yeah. He said, he passed away yesterday. I said, you're kidding me. I mean, I was uh, just devastated, you know. I mean, I was going down for the third time. I was just like, are you kidding me? How many know that feeling when you talk to somebody about the Lord and they, and, they, and they don't get saved? You want to know something? You're not the Savior. You are not the Savior. I, I know that might be a shock to some people, but not only are we not the Savior, we're not the Holy Spirit. How many know the Holy Spirit can go where you can't go? You know the Holy Spirit is in every bar? Did you know that? It's called omnipresence. You can't exclude him from anywhere. And he has the power to convict you and me no matter where we stand on this earth. And so I, I was down. I, I was going down for the third time on the phone of the conversation. And my pastor, but I, but I said, that's not, the, that's not the end of the story. So I'm going to tell you the rest of the story. I said, oh, thank you, Jesus. I hope there's something coming. He said, yeah, you know what happened? He said he was laying in bed. It was at the Cleveland Clinic, I believe it was. He said he was laying in bed at night. And he said, the Spirit of God began to deal with him. And he said it was right at 11 o'clock for the shift change where the nurses change and the new nurses come in at 11 o'clock. And he said a little nurse walked into his room. She happened to be African-American singing. And Cody heard her singing a Christian song. And he said, ma'am, he said, do you happen to know Jesus and do you happen to know how I can get saved and she looked up she says oh yes I do and she says I'll be right back and she went out and got six nurses that were saved and she brought them all in and they stood around Cody's bed and they led him to Jesus and that night he passed into glory friend it's not too late it's not too late for your friends it's not too late for your sister it's not too late for you. It wasn't too late for him. And what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say this. If you've got somebody that needs the Lord and it seems like there's not much hope, I'm here to tell you there is hope. There is hope. Oh, thank God for a shift change. Thank God for the 11 o'clock hour when that little nurse came walking in singing the praises of God. So never count it out. We are all treated the same by Jesus. He is no respecter of persons. He treats you the same. He treats you the same. What's that? You are primarily a spiritual person. Number two, you are positively a sinful person. But number three, <laughs> oh, you are presently savable by his grace. Thank you, Jesus.